glad that you are here. I'm glad you're, you're watching. And I believe that when we open up the Word of God, things begin to get um, potentially um, different in our lives. Right? Let's practice. Ready? Okay, we're going to try that again. Okay, when we open the words of God. Okay, that was good. So we're going to open the word of God this morning. And so we are in the final week of a series, and the series is called Beyond Blessed. Everyone say, Beyond Blessed. Beyond. So we're wrapping up the series. We will end in a few moments with communion. We always end the series uh, with communion. It's just the way that we do it um, here. And so... Beyond blessed means there are some blessings that God directed to Abraham that are also for our lives, and they're beyond normal. And we had a great first experience opening up the word, and, and so I just believe that, that God's here right now. I sense him. And, and I do believe that when we say the word of God, or we speak the word of God, it, it's life-changing. I, and I really believe that what I'm going to share today really, really is life-changing. And the last time I preached on this, it started some controversy on Facebook. Imagine that. And, and um, I do want to remind you, I didn't write this book. That would be God. I'm just telling you what he said. So as long as we keep it in context and prove out what God said, it, it's a promise. It's a book of promises, and they're for you, and, and they're for me. And so last time, um, I, I don't even know how it all got started, but, but so anyway, someone didn't like what I said. So really what, um, I think they called me, um, they called it heresy. And so if they're calling it heresy, they're calling God the heretic, right? Because it's his principle. And so you'll, you'll see where I'm going in a moment. So you're probably thinking, Lord, what are you going to teach? <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds. But I just wanted you to know that it'll, it'll mess with maybe some religious stuff that you, you ever thought or just stuff you hear that, that, that's, you know, just in common, you know, everyday language. So God shows up to this man named Abraham. And Abraham was a, a, a pagan. He was without a son as a descendant to carry on his name. He had no territory, and God showed up to him. His wife was barren, and God showed up, and God said, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And so Abraham was in a land called Haran, and Haran means a parched place. So he was in a dry, parched place. That was his life at that time. And so God shows up, and he says, Abraham, he says, I'm going to call you up out of a parched place. I'm going to lead you into a promised place. And he said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to take you from being barren into a great nation. In other words, your wife is barren, but I'm going to do such a work, and that work's going to happen that she's actually going to um, have a promised child, and it's out of that lineage that even Jesus finally, finally came. And so Abraham, God said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to make your name reputable, and you're going to be a blessing. The goodness of God is going to manifest in your life in such a way that it is going to bless other people. And whoever speaks blessing at you, I'll bless them. And if they speak cursing at you, I'm actually going to put a curse on them. So God came in the covenant with this man named Abraham. If we fast forward to the book of Hebrews, we see that Abraham, um, at that time, uh, he was barren. His wife had no child. And he was about 99 years old. How many know when you're 99, it's sort of impossible to, number one, want to be pregnant, and two, to get pregnant, Right? I mean, some of you are like, yeah, past that point. I don't, I don't. So, but God made this promise. Even older in his years, God made him this promise. And so about 25 years later, um, this promise comes forth. And the Bible says in Hebrews that Abraham was counted righteous because he had faith in God through all of the impossibilities. And during those 25 years, if you read the story of Abraham, he made some mistakes. And he tried to do things his way. And he was excited at times, and he was discouraged at times, and he's like the rest of us. But he just kept step by step believing God, and the faithfulness of God proved itself in his life, and God called him faithful. He's in Hebrews chapter 11 listed. He's called the patriarch of our faith, and he's not a perfect man, but because he put faith in God over the long haul and believed, God, God made sure the blessings he promised came about in his life. And the way that God was going to do all of that in his life, the Bible said, by the blessing of God. That means the goodness of God manifested in his life. And that's the same way that God blesses or, or brings forth the promises in our life because we don't deserve them. We can't repay God for them. It's a gift of God. The blessings of God are a gift, but they're accessed by faith. And we read in Galatians that the Bible says this, that Jesus was the seed of Abraham. And so the seed of Abraham was given the blessing of Abraham. And then the Bible goes on and it says, because we are believers or we are men and women of faith in Christ, 
We, are the inherit, we inherit the blessing given to the seed of Abraham. So Jesus was the seed, and God treats us like he treats Jesus, so we inherit the same blessing of Abraham, all spiritual blessing, the Bible said. And so that blessing in our life has power. And so I want to finish this series this morning about this blessing, and I want to talk this morning, my title is The Blessing of Longevity. The Blessing of of longevity, and I'm going to give you the three same points I've done in the whole series, and we'll just talk about some different stuff. So the first point that I've said in this series is the blessing of God empowers, or the blessing is empowering. Now, when a Jewish person heard the blessing, it's a little different than us, because somebody sneezes, and we're like, God bless you, because we don't want sneezed on, right? God bless you. But it was, it was a different saying than it would just be in our normal culture. So when someone said, you're blessed, what they were saying is, all of heaven now resides with the capacity in you. In other words, all that God has the resource and capacity to do, you happen to be the target of it. The blessing of God. So when they say you're blessed by God, or it's the blessing of God that's going to do something, that means God's going to perform his promises that you can't perform yourself. And so the blessing actually has four different parts or four different meanings, and this has been our points each week. And so the first thing that the blessing of God means is that you are blessed to prosper. Now, prosper in all ways, but instinctly and directly, it really means a material blessing, a financial blessing. And so the Lord wants you to be blessed and prosper. Amen. Yeah. Now, our goal is not to be just rich or just have money, but the Lord blesses you. And when the Lord gets involved in your life and you follow and you manage that blessing well, there'll be prosperity in your life. Yeah. The second thing it means is that you'll be successful. You have the capacity to be a success in your marriage, in your business, whatever area of your life. When the blessing of God gets involved, there's prosperity that shows up and there's success that follows. Yeah. The third thing it means is that you'll be fruitful. He didn't have a son, God made him fruitful. Or we said this last week, it means increase. There should be, a, wherever the blessing of God is, there's increase, there's prosperity, it, it, there, there's success. These are just signs that the covenant of God is working in your life. And what do they do? They, they, they give God the glory. They give God the, the attention. They're connected to the kingdom of God. So it's not just about us getting stuff, but God's all right with you getting stuff because it just proves how blessed you are because of whose you are. So we need not fight against that, those type of people. You know, the only people that want to fight against prosperity are people who don't give. Are you all with me? So we just need to receive what God said. Why fight against the things? If God wanted you to be broke and sick and, and destroyed, he would call those things benefits. The Bible says the benefits of God are pursuing you, and they will track you down and pounce on you. And it says this, you've got to remember the benefits you have in God. But it says nowhere in those benefits, oh, well, by the way, you have the benefit of sickness, destruction, loneliness, despair. It doesn't say that. Or he would say this is a blessing. Well, pastor, the Bible talks about suffering. The Bible, Jesus did say, you're going to face challenges. There will be suffering. But he wasn't talking about sickness. And he was talking about, you're going to be persecuted because of the things you believe. That's what Jesus was. But we go in life and we do have challenges. So I'm not talking about a perfect life. There are going to be challenges because we're on this planet. But you have the blessing of God on your life, in your life, behind your life. And, and so the other part of that blessing is, guess what? It's longevity. So let me define for you what longevity means. Longevity means, it does mean the duration of your days, but it also means the continuance of your days. Um, it means the permanence of your days, or I like this, the, dur the durability of your days. So what I'm saying is the blessing of God empowers you to live a long, strong life. A long and strong life. A um, few verses, I won't put these on the screen, but I'll just reference them. Proverbs chapter 3 says uh, this, If we keep the word of God, he will add length of days and peace to our lives. If we keep the word of God, God's going to add to our life days and peace. Well, how many know if he just added days without any peace, that's not necessarily a blessing, it's just a longer, miserable time span. But he said, I will do what? I'm going to add some days, and in those days, there will be peace. And you know what? You would pay millions of dollars for peace. Because the opposite of peace is torment. And you would spend big bucks if you could just bottle up some peace. When you're tormented in your heart, in your mind, or your body, and you lay there and you can't think and you can't say, you would do what? You would pay big bucks for some peace. But the Bible said it's a gift he'll just give you. And so 
Proverbs says, I'll just add peace and length of days. Proverbs also says this, his wisdom adds days and it adds years to your life. Wisdom. I said this last week, I think that every problem in your life is a wisdom problem. And God says, if you need wisdom, ask for it. I'll give it to you liberally. So wisdom brings with it what? Added days to your life, added years to your life. Um, Proverbs also says this, if you have reverence for God, he will, pro- he will prolong your life. Hosea says this, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge, wisdom, revelation. What that means is there are God-believing people whose lives are shortened because they don't have revelation on certain things in their life about healing about prospering, about the blessing of God. These are promises that God talks about. So when I say to you that the blessing of God is is beyond blessing and it empowers your life, it empowers you to guess what? Longevity, to have duration in your life, to have um, permanence in your life, to have days added and peace added. I want you to live a long life, but I want you to have the peace of God and the joy of God and the blessing of God in your life. That's promise that God made to us and it, it is for us because of Jesus. Second thing I've been saying during these weeks is this, is what you do with the blessing determines exactly what the blessing will do with you. God's putting that blessing on your life. He's putting that capacity in your life. And it's how we respond or manage that blessing that determines what we do. And I say, well, prove that. Well, the Bible says this, if you are willing and you are obedient, if you honor the blessing of God, guess what? You will eat the best of the land. So there are some conditions that we, that we receive the blessing by faith, that we walk in faith with the blessing. So the Bible says that sort of thing is this word called stewardship. We would call it managing. If we manage the promises of God and we manage the blessings of God the right way, those, those blessings will manifest in, as goodness in our life. Let me, let, let me just put it this way. The blessing is a gift. We access it by faith. Amen. The things of God, the goodness of God, they, they show up as gifts in our life, but we have to receive them by faith. And, and so, first of all, we need to have some revelation on certain things. We get revelation, we can put faith to it. Because if you don't have revelation, you can't put faith to it. So if we get revelation on the fact that part of the blessing of God that's on my life because I'm in covenant with God is longevity. It means a few things. Y'all ready to find out what it means? I, I, I appreciate on, uh, you know, um, it was like, what, 70 some degrees yesterday and then that white stuff was falling this morning crazy. I know it messes with our moods and our focus, but you guys seem fired up this morning. So in, in, in Psalm 90, in Psalm 90 is a verse where we get a little bit of our thoughts from, but let me describe Psalm 90 to you. In, in Psalm 90, God is, it, it's a reflection or it's connected to God bringing judgment on the children of Israel in the wilderness. God calls them out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage, and his goal was for them to cross over and go into the promised land or into Canaan land, and the children of Israel got across the river from the promised land, and across the river from the promised land, they sent spies out, they brought back a bad report, and so the whole generation began to cry out and get mad at Moses, and they said, we want to go back into slavery in Egypt, it would have been better, let's just go back and die there. And it aroused the anger, and it aroused the wrath of God, and God said, this whole generation except for Joshua and Caleb, because they were saying, we can go, let's go up now. God said it, we can do it. There are giants, but the bigger they are, the harder they fall. We can go in the name of God. They had faith. They had an attitude of faith. But the rest of the generation said, no, we want to go die in Egypt. And so God said, this generation is going to die across the river from the promised land. Joshua and Caleb, you will take the next generation in. In the context of Psalm chapter 90, it's about the judgment of God in the wilderness. And in verse number 10, look what it says. The days of your life are going to be 70. In reason of strength, they might be 80. So part of the wrath of God or the judgment of God is that we live 70 to 80 years. That's where we get our thinking at. And a lot of people think, hey, you know what? If I make 70 to 80 years... Awesome, I'm doing good. And that sort of is our goal. We shoot for 60, 65, we're gonna retire, we're gonna sit on the back porch with an iced tea, hope we make it to 80. And that is sort of where our thinking comes from. But what if I told you that's actually not what the blessing says? That's what the curse or the wrath says. But there's a different blessing that God talks about. Y'all wanna find out what that is? So what I'm gonna do is let me read Psalm 90. I'm just gonna read the whole Psalm to you. It's only 16 verses and it is, it is in conflict with chapter 90. Because in chapter 90, God is saying, here's the judgment. It's 70 to 80 years. It's all this stuff. But then in verse number or chapter 91, God starts saying something different about the next generation. 
And we're not in a season of wrath, we're in the season of the grace of God, so this blessing and this promise is actually toward us. Y'all ready for this? Psalm 91, I'm just gonna read, you can follow along, I may read fast at times, but here we go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that means he who is in communion with God. Not he who drives up to the fast food drive through window of church, but he who dwells in the place of God. That's different. It says, they will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, let me say this to you. You gotta understand what's going on. A generation, it, there were 40 years of death. You gotta picture this. They, they say there were probably over a million people that left Egypt, don't know exactly, but so over 40 years, a million people are dying off by pestilence, disease, violence, etc. God had to let a generation die off. That's something like 70, 79, 100 funerals a day. So if you lived during that time across the river from the promised land, all you knew was funerals, sickness, death, fear, and destruction, but God started giving this promise in the midst of that. Y'all with me? So he said this, I will say of the Lord, the Lord's my refuge. And the Lord's my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. That means disease. He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you, will, you are going to take refuge. And his truth shall be your shield. It shall be your buckler. His truth is going to protect them is what it's saying. You shall not be afraid of the terror at night. Now, they're hearing the cries, the funerals, the fear, the destruction. They're hearing it, but he said, you shall not be afraid of that terror, and you shall not be afraid of the arrow or the destruction that comes during the day. It goes on, and it says, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. That's disease. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Now, look what verse 7 says. A thousand, <clears throat> pardon me, a thousand may fall at your side, and 10,000 may fall at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Yeah. Not going to come near you. Only with your eye will you look and you're going to see the reward of the wicked. He said, it doesn't, you don't have to experience it. You might see it around you, but it doesn't have to come into your tent. It doesn't have to come into your house. It doesn't have to come into your place. And it tells us why. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, the most high, you've made him your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor shall any plague come on your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over your situation and they will keep you in all of your ways in their hands you will bear um, they shall bear you up lest you should dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you're going to trample those destructive things under your feet Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call on me, and I am going to answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Look how he will honor him, verse 16. And with long life, I'm going to satisfy him, and I'm going to show off my salvation. That was written in conflict of verse 90. Verse 90 was judgment. This is saying you can watch the judgment all around you, but you're in covenant with me. You are people of faith, and my hand's going to be on you. Now, we live in a world that has new diseases every day, diseases working, diseases constantly going on. There's sickness, there's threat, there's threat of terror, there's threat of danger, there's death, there's destruction, and there's fear. I've got a word to you. God wants to satisfy your days. God wants to bless you beyond blessing with longevity. And what it says is you can see that happen in other people's lives. This is what the word of God says, reminding you, I didn't write this. God wrote this. I'm just telling you what God said, that the hand of God can keep the things of the world around you from destroying you. So in, di in this chapter, there are three promises that you can hang on to. Number one, God says, I will multiply your days. I will multiply your days. Here's what that means. The Lord will lengthen your days. Length of days will be added and you'll be protected from what shortens your days. Yeah. Y'all get that? I'm gonna lengthen your days and I'm gonna protect you from that which will shorten your days. Well, what is that? Here's a promise, protection. If, you, if God's going to bless you with longevity, he has to protect you from some things that are out there that would try to shorten your days. 
whether they would be danger, destruction, whatever it might be, it's a promise from God. How do we know God keeps his promises? The Bible said he's not a man that he will lie. This is a promise about the blessing of God. And if you are a re receiver of the blessing of God, you're in covenant with God, then you can put your faith, remember, it's accessed by faith in this fact that God wants to add to your days, which means if he's going to add your days, he has to protect you from that which would shorten your days. Now, listen to this statement. you got to get this. Life was shortened because of disobedience in the wilderness. Life was shortened because man disobeyed in the wilderness. Life was lengthened because one man obeyed in a different wilderness. All because of Jesus. All because of Jesus, this blessing can come on you that was promised to Abraham. Now, you can go to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. I'm not going to put it on the screen. Here's what it says to you. You are promised not 70 to 80 years, but 120 years. Thank you for the enthusiasm. You, you can look at it. You are promised 120 years. That was the years under the blessing. 70 to 80 was the years under the wrath. So 120 years. Can you all believe that? So, so I, I, um, just, just you know, to let you know that I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm closer to a midlife crisis than I've ever been. I didn't do a midlife crisis when I turned 30. When I turned 60, I, I'm getting a new sports car when I turned 60. That's my midlife crisis. Right? If it's 120, y'all with me? So our goal is not to hit 60, retire, and sit on the back porch with some tea, and just watch life go by. God's got some things in those days. He said, I want to lengthen your days. Uh, so the average American lives somewhere between 76 to 81 years. And they say uh, probably about 78, and women live longer than men because men are dumb. <laughs> they do dumb things. We jump motorcycles off of things. We just do stuff to make women go, why, why would you do that? Right? It's called rednecking, right? You know what the last thing a redneck says is watch this. Right? It's the last thing they say. <laughs> so women live a little bit longer than Sorry if you're a redneck, um, but that's, that's why we don't live as long. But that's the average that American would live. But they say right now there's, there's close to 60,000 people that are 100 years old living right now. The most, the, actually one of the fastest growing populations is the, is the 80s right now, people living in their 80s. Isn't that amazing? Well, science has proven this, like medically proven this, your body is actually meant for 120 years. Well, God said that, but that's what science said. You're actually meant for 120 years. That's actually what your body's meant for. This is actually really cool. Um, after the first experience, this guy came up to me and said, I want to tell you a story. And, and uh, his job is he, he goes into courtroom or courthouses and he, he, um, he researches to find like leases and things like that. So they have to find out who owns properties. And he said, there was, there's a woman that uh, was born in 1866. This is in Wetzel County wherever that's at, it's around here somewhere. So Wetzel County, born in 1866. And he said no one could find like the end date. They did all this research, no one could ever find. So they just started saying, well, she probably died here and she was probably 60 and da, da, da. And he said he finally was able to find out her length of days and he found out, somehow, however he did it, he found out when she died and she died in 1986. That's 120 years. And there's lots of stories like that. That's not the only one, but that's what God made our bodies for. So the blessing of God is empowering, and what we do with the blessing of God determines what it does in our lives. So, so the, God wants to add to your days. Amen. Well, that ought to excite you. I, 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 no, listen, if you're 25, I get it. You don't care. But when you start getting a little bit over that, you're like, come on, I, that's the message. I, I take it, Pastor. Because when you're 25, you're just not smart about those things. You think, yeah, whatever. But um, how many get a little more tread on the tire? Be becomes a little more important, right? Are y'all with me? So, so I, I, I declare, you know, we're, at LifePoint, we're giving you some revelation to put some faith to. We're, we're, we're going to be here for a while. I, I don't have an exit plan yet, right? So we're going to be like, and we're not going to be like, well, praise the Lord. It's not going to be like that. We're going to be, we're, we're going to be alive. Amen? So add, add to your days. The, 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 the second thing is, he says, I'm not only going to add to your days, I'm going to satisfy your days. I'm going to satisfy your days. And, and really what that means is you're going to make it until you're satisfied. You're going to make it until you're, you, you, you're going to make it until you're satisfied. I say, God, what? I get that. But what, what does that really, I mean, what are you really saying? 
And I, as I begin to dwell on that, this is exactly what I think this means, that we are satisfied when our purposes are fulfilled. When the purposes and promises and plans of God are fulfilled in your life, you could be satisfied. So in other words, let me put it this way. You're gonna live long enough to see those prayers answered. And you're gonna live long enough for God to restore some areas of your life. And you're gonna live long enough for God to bring the breakthrough that you've been believing for. There are some purposes, there are some plans, and there are some prayers that God wants to manifest in your life. And you're gonna have to live long enough for those things to come to fruition. I mean, no, that's some good news. Yeah. Hey, and so if he's going to satisfy your days, he said, I'm going to add to your days. I'm going to add some peace with it. And, and so if God's going to add to your days, he's going to have to bring protection into your days. And if he's going to make your days satisfaction, uh, satisfied, he's going to have to bring some peace into your days. Yeah. So the good news is this. The purposes of God, the plans of God, the, the, the things of God he wants to bless you with, you're going to live long enough for those things to come to pass if you can have some faith stirred up for those things. I got some things that haven't happened yet. I, anyone have some stuff that, uh, you know, the Bible says the devil has to repay you for the things the devil stole from your life. Anyone got some stuff he needs to restore? Well, God, was, you're going to live long enough to see those things restored if we can put faith to some of the things that I'm saying to you. I'm going to satisfy your days. Now, do not run out of here and say, I'm, not, I'm preaching, you're never going to have a problem. I'm not, I'm not preaching that. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some challenges. Sometimes we cause our own challenges. Sometimes we have some things that come against the blessings of God. And so it is then when we've got to have faith in these, these things that I'm preaching. So, so Paul, remember Paul actually had this challenge. And, and it went a little bit like this with Paul. Paul said, I want to go be with Jesus. I'm torn. I want to see Jesus, but I'm not done yet. Anyone feel like that? Anyone just, I, I, just, I, I, I like to see Jesus. And Paul said, if I go to Jesus, I gain. But if I stay and finish out my purposes, God gains because I fulfill the things of the kingdom. And that needs to be all right to me. I'm ready to see, anyone ready to see Jesus? I mean, it's getting crazy out there. I promise you, it's not long, but we still got some things going on, some things God wants to do. It's the, it's the craziest hour on the planet, but it's the greatest hour for the church. Anyone believe in to see some things in church? The Bible said the latter days are going to be greater than the former days, right? So we're going to live to see some of those things happen. So he will satisfy your days. He will lengthen your days. And I love this next one. He's going to invigorate your days. Invigorate your days. You say, wow, that's a big word. Yeah. So if God is going to lengthen your days, he's going to have to protect you from some things that will try to shorten your days. And if, he, if in your life... God's going to satisfy your days. He's going to have to bring some peace into a tormenting world. And if God's going to invigorate your days, he's going to have to bring some provision. And so invigorate means some things like this. How about this? Strengthen. Anyone, God doesn't want you to be broke down when you check out of here. He wants you to, the Bible says that you should be renewed with your, in your strength like that of a what? An eagle. So invigorate means he wants to strengthen your days. He wants to energize your days. Yeah. I love this next one. He wants to show you his victory in your days. Yes. He wants you to live long enough to continue to see his victory after victory after victory in your life. Yeah. Energize, show you victory, deliver you, help you, bring safety. It also means he wants to prosper you in your days. That's why the book of 3 John says this, a brethren, above all things, I would have you prosper and be in health just like your soul is prospering. It's the will of God. He wants you to live long enough to prosper, live long enough to what? See the purpose of God, the promises of God. He wants to invigorate your life. This is a dangerous word because if you start putting your faith toward this, the rest of your days can be greater than the rest of your days. Did y'all get that? The rest of your days. He wants to invigorate those days. Well, just hanging on to Jesus comes. Or just, um, you know, bless the Lord. That's my old man voice. <laughs> but the word of the Lord says this. We're in, we're, we're in covenant with God. We're beyond blessed. There could be death, destruction all around us, but we're dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. What? We're dwelling under the word of God. We are dwelling under the word of God, not the word of science, not the word of man, not the word of medicine, not the word of CNN, constant negative news, not under the word of Facebook, thank you, Jesus. We're dwelling under the word of the Lord. 
If we're dwelling under the word of the Lord, we're protected by the word of the Lord. Matter of fact, this, this chapter every morning, I would encourage you this. There, there's something I say every morning that goes, it's sort of my own words, but it's this chapter. I say this, because a lot of people get it wrong. They're like, I just plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Well, you're, you don't beg with the blood of Jesus. You draw a bloodline of Jesus. And I say this every morning, and I say it over my kids, I say it over my wife, I say it over myself. I actually say it over you guys as the church. I say this all the time. I say, Father, I thank you, and I draw a bloodline. Thank you for Psalm 91. I draw that bloodline around my kids, my family, our church. And I, and I say this, what the word says, the, the pestilence will be far from us, which is disease. Um, the perils of people, which is people problems. Um, I, I say something like this. I, I, I say, Father, I thank you that we're kept from the arrows that come during the day and the crises that come in the middle of the night. It's far from us. You know what's awesome about believing like that? I honestly don't spend all of my days at the hospitals. I get to study the word. Because we have a healthy church. You say, why are they so healthy? I mean, and, and there are things that happen at times, and you respond in those things of faith. I'm not saying none of those things happen. Well, you're just a young church. We got, no, we got all ages. But the word of God will keep you healthy. It'll keep you sane. It will keep you blessed. I'm not saying nothing will ever challenge you. What, do you, what happens in a challenge? Well, you, you respond in faith. Y'all glad you came? All right, the, the, here's, here's the last point I've been saying over these weeks. Our faithfulness keeps the blessing flowing. The blessing empowers us. What we do with that blessing determines what the blessing does with us. And our faithfulness to that blessing, to manage it, the Bible said there's one thing that a manager has to be, and he has to be faithful. And the Bible says even staying faithful in the smallest things lets me make you or give you bigger things. See, when we are faithful in the things of God, we're proving out the things of God. We're proving the faithfulness of God. We're proving the worthiness of God. We're proving that we're worthy of a trust, and he's worthy of blessing what we have put our faith to. Now, let, let me end with one verse and say three quick startling things to you. Can y'all handle it? Y'all give me five more minutes? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now, you got my good... Got my good, good sign, thank you. Um, let me do that again. Now, may the God of peace, who's the God of peace? He's the God of peace himself. Let it sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body, let it be preserved to the coming of the Lord. What is he saying? Let, let your life be preserved to the coming of the Lord. And he mentions these three things, your spirit, your soul, and your body. Every person has three dimensions, a spirit, a soul, and a body. When you get saved, your spirit is what's born again. Your flesh didn't get saved, and your mind didn't get saved. That's why the Bible says in Romans, renew your mind, remodel your mind, renovate your mind. The Bible says that's your, that's your act of worship, to have your mind, what, remodeled. That's what we should do as Christians. Our spirit's born again, it's saved, now we remodel. How do we remodel our mind? We take the word of God, we put the word of God to our stinking thinking. So here's what I wanna challenge you with. If you can give your spirit, your soul, and your body the right attention, and, and your soul is this, it's your mind, your will, and emotions. If you put the word of God in you, in you, and I give you this challenge to take care of your spirit, soul, and body, guess what you'll do? You, you'll have longevity. You'll have longevity if you keep renewing your mind. Like this word I just gave you this morning, that's renewing your mind. Because you, you used to think, I'm shooting for 70 to 80 years. That'd, be, that'd just be a blessing. Well, the blessing is 120. I mean, that's what the Bible says. What if, what if I don't make it? What if you do? <laughs> what if you get close? Now, I'm not talking about, well, I made it to, you know, I made it to 80. And <laughs> I'm, not ta I'm talking about your days are blessed. Yeah. They're invigorated. Yeah. Now, granted, you, th there's some things that squeak more now than they used to, right? That's just the natural. But if you take care, even, even uh, physically, you just need a balance. Do good with what you're eating. Do good with some exercise. Treat this temple, the Bible says, right. Renew this thing. Amen. And feed your spirit, man. And the blessing of longevity will be on your life. It will be on your life. It's a promise. Now, now, now you, you, you can remodel this and renew this and like overdose on Twinkies, and this won't last long enough. 
right? You need to treat all that in the right way, in a very balanced way. I mean, no, that's some good news. So I challenge you with that. Over the long haul, the blessing of God will be on your life. It was on Abraham. And Jesus was the seed of Abraham. And if you have faith in Jesus, the same blessing God gave Abraham, God gives you. So can I end with my three startling statements? Take in context everything I've said over the last four weeks, everything I've said this morning, and I want you to hear these three things. I want you to remember this. God will allow what you allow in your life. He will allow what you allow in your life. You you can listen to this message and say, I'm not buying into that. And God will allow whatever in your life. Just if we allow it in our life, God's going to allow it in our life. I mean, he may convict us of it. He may be like, ahem. He may try to correct us, but he's going to allow what we allow. If we allow doubt, it can stay. This is why I say let's put faith to these things. God allows what we allow. You know what? You can keep your bad attitude. God will let you. You you, you can keep your unforgiveness, and you'll die early. You can allow a spirit of fear. They say fear is the number one contributor to Alzheimer's. You you can let fear dominate you. God will allow it. But faith won't allow it. If you get revelation, put faith to this stuff, it it can change. You you might have said, well, you know, granddaddy died at 60, and daddy died at 60, I'm going to die at 60, same heart disease. Or how about you just say what faith says? God can change all that. Here's the second startling thing I would say to you, is that the devil will stay where he's permitted. He's just going to stay where he's permitted. And the devil thrives where there's ignorance and darkness. He cannot stay when he is exposed to the truth, the light of the truth. He can't stay. The devil will always, if you watch, he will always, always expose his hand. Always. Truth will expose him. Hey, there's some things in my life I don't want to allow anymore. I don't want to permit the devil in some areas. My life, my attitudes, my thoughts. Here's the third thing I want you to remember. This, those are the two bad things. This is the good one. That God goes wherever faith puts him. God goes wherever faith puts him. Did y'all get that? It'll, he'll go where faith puts him. So if you could put, start putting your faith toward what I preached today, how about instead of just talking about how bad your body feels, or how bad your conditions are, or how bad your situation, how about you say what God said? Because you know, you don't call yourself blessed because you feel blessed. There's times we feel blessed and it's proper to just acclaim that to God. I have this blessing happened at work or this blessing happened here. But when we don't feel so blessed, you're still blessed. And you cannot, you cannot judge your tomorrow based on an experience you saw in your life or someone else. Here's what I mean by that. Well, someone else, maybe something happened and you equate the experience and you're having trouble believing what God said. You've got to say, this is what God said and this is what God wants in spite of what I may have experienced or what I may have saw because that will keep your faith from functioning. That will keep your faithfulness from keeping the blessing of God flourishing and flowing in your life. There are things that happen. We can't explain everything and we don't understand everything and we just got to say, I've got to trust that in your hands, but I believe what the word of God says, therefore I'm going to decree it over my life. I, I, I can guarantee you that, the, that your tomorrow can be more blessed than your yesterday is it was if you get into the word of God and say, God, I just call this area of my life blessed. God, I call my financial situation blessed, so I'm going to be a giver. God, I call um, my future blessed because you, part of the blessing is I will succeed. And God, I, I'm going to call increase as a blessing over my life. And you may have come from nothing. I just want you to know that the blessing of God is conditioned on the covenant you're in with God. And God's faithful on his end. And if we're faithful on our end, and thank God for the grace in between when we got messy. But the blessing of God has nothing to do with the color of your skin or what side of the tracks you came from, or what demographic you live under. That's why Jesus on the cross took care of the curse. He is the seed of Abraham, not, not nationality, not origin. And that's why through Jesus, by faith, we access these things. So the only excuse we would have 
for the blessing of God is when we get weak enough to use those excuses. We need to stay strong enough to believe in those things. Amen? So we're going to be here for a while, right, until Jesus comes, right? I mean, this church, we're going to be, you know, going to be like invigorated, added days. Come on, somebody. Added days. Added, now, if you're 25, I get it. You're not thinking about it. But some of you, how about, I needed this word this morning. I was checking out. I was just thinking how, some of you have been sitting around wondering how much time you got. You're worried about how much time instead of living and how many days you got right now. You're worried about the disease instead of focus. You know why the Bible says sickness often comes? Actually, grab, grab your communion because in Corinthians it says this, we are not discerning the body of the Lord. Jesus hung on a cross, yes, to save us, but yes, he hung there to break the power of death and he hung there to power, break the power of poverty and he hung there to break the power of sickness and disease. And the Bible says we're often not healed because we're not discerning that his body is as much for salvation as his broken body on that cross was for our healing. Did y'all get that? So we need to discern that, yes, he hung on that cross and shed his blood for salvation, but it also provided healing into our natural bodies. Jesus on the cross made the blessing possible to come on our lives, no matter our past. Anyone glad for Jesus? Anyone glad for this word this morning? Y'all ought to be happy. Some of y'all ought to be really happy. Somebody needs to know this. You're living long enough to see these blessings come. Because God has been lying to a couple people about, about taking you out. The devil's been lying to somebody that, he's, that your days are numbered. And you remind him, you're right, they're numbered. 120. 120. 120. 120. It's a promise. See, when the devil says, you need to say, but God said. 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 The devil keeps telling you you're going under, but God said no. The devil keeps telling you you're going to die of a certain disease, but God said. Let's all stand.